Welcome to the NASA Award Closeout Training Course. My name is Corey Walls, Senior Analyst in the Procurement and Grants Policy Division within NASA's Office of Procurement. This course is designed to provide an overview of the final phase of the award life cycle, the closeout phase. This phase of the award life cycle begins as soon as the period of performance noted on your NASA form, NF, 1687 ends. After this course, you should have a better understanding of what award closeout is and why it is necessary, the regulations and policies that govern closeout, and NASA award recipients' closeout roles and responsibilities. Please note that throughout this course, the word award only refers to grants and cooperative agreements, and award does not mean contracts. An introduction to award closeout. In this section, I will provide an introduction to the closeout phase of the award life cycle, including defining closeout, giving an overview of where closeout falls in the grant life cycle, and describing why closeout is important to you as NASA's recipient. So what is award closeout? Award closeout occurs after an awards period of performance, or POP, has expired or been terminated. It is the process by which recipients ensure all administrative actions and required work have been completed. Closeout activities constitute the fourth and final phase of the award life cycle, following the successful implementation of the NASA funded project. During the closeout phase, recipients are required to submit final financial and progress reports and any other final report required by your award. We will discuss these reports in more depth later in this course. The recipient must submit any remaining payment requests and return unexpended funds if necessary. NASA ensures all reports are and deliverables are complete, makes final payments, and closes the award in the financial systems amongst other activities that we will discuss further in this training. This period also should begin the period of record retention. Award recipients are required to complete a number of actions during the closeout phase. At NASA, grant officers or GOs at the NASA Shared Services Center or NSSC's Grant Activities Branch and technical officers, TOs, in the program offices are primarily responsible for completing closeout activities for the agency. Award recipients who have issued subawards are also required to close out those subawards and ensure that the, the subrecipients submit all final reports to you as the pass-through entity. Closeout is beneficial to NASA recipients in a few ways. It ensures that the recipient within their organization has completed the work they intended on NASA-funded projects and met all administrative requirements. It provides the recipient time to ensure that all expenses have been reimbursed and all vendors paid. It allows recipients time to ensure any overpayments are remitted to NASA. It frees up administrative and project staff time to pursue other NASA or federally funded projects. It signals to the appropriators on Capitol Hill that the funding is needed and is used appropriately to support a public good and begins the record retention period. This ensures that records required for audits or monitoring activities are disposed of in a timely manner, limiting administrative risk and burden. Closeout regulations and policies. In this section, we will provide an overview of federal regulations and policies that govern the closeout process at NASA. Award closeout requirements with which NASA and the recipients must adhere come from several regulations and policies. In this section, we will discuss the requirements in Title II of the Code of Federal Regulations, Part 200 or 2 CFR 200, Office of Management and Budget, and the NASA Grant and Cooperative Agreement Manual. 2 CFR 200 contains requirements for NASA to successfully close out an award, the regulation states that NASA must make prompt payments to the recipient for allowable cost, must make a settlement for any upward or downward adjustment to the federal share of costs, make every effort to close out an award no later than one year after the end of a POP, and if a recipient fails to provide all final reports within one year of a POP end date, NASA must report those entities' failure to comply in SAM.gov. 2 CFR 200 also contains closeout requirements for award recipients. Per the regulation, recipients must do the following once their awards POP has ended. 
submit all final reports within 120, 120 days of the POP end date, liquidate all financial obligations within 120 days after the end of the POP, return all funds that are not authorized to be retained, and if applicable, account for any real or personal property acquired with federal funds. To ensure that NASA complies with closeout requirements in 2 CFR 200 and OMB Circular A136, the agency has developed NASA-specific policy to guide our closeout activities. NASA closeout policies can be found in the GCAM, which provides a closeout overview and closeout process and requirements. These sections of the GCAM describe actions award recipients must complete to successfully close out an award. We will discuss NASA-specific closeout procedures in the following section of this presentation. Award recipient responsibilities. During the closeout process, award recipients are responsible for the following activities. Submitting all required final reports, liquidating financial obligations, requesting final payments, returning unexpended funds, if any, and accounting for any award funded property where applicable and closing out any subawards that may have been issued. We will discuss each of these activities in the following slides. Recipients will receive notifications from the NSSC stating that their award or awards have period of performance or POP that has expired and that they have 120 days to complete their closeout activities. Recipients will receive monthly reminders to close out activities during the 120 day closeout period. Once the 120 day closeout period has ended, recipients who have not completed required closeout activities will receive weekly reminders stating that they are non-compliant with closeout requirements. Award recipients should begin preparing for closeout as soon as possible to ensure that they are able to complete all required activities during the 120 day period. Within 120 days of a POP end date, recipients must submit all final reports. This includes the Program Performance Progress Report, or RPPR, format in the final Financial Reports, or final FFR, in the SF-425 format, the final New Technology Report, and any inventory reports. All final reports, unless otherwise noted, should be sent to the NASA Shared Services Center at the email address on the screen. In addition to submitting final reports, award recipients must liquidate all financial obligations associated with the award within 120 days of their POP end date. An obligation is considered liquidated when all payments to relevant vendors or providers of goods and services have been completed. While recipients must, uh, must liquidate all obligations during the 120 day period, note that they cannot incur new obligations during that period. New obligations may only be incurred when the awards POP is still active. It is not uncommon for an award recipient to have to liquidate obligations during the 120 day closeout period. Examples of obligations may, that may need to be liquidated include payments to a contractor, or subgrant recipient, rent payments, personnel compensation, and or payments for acquired goods or services. Award recipients may not incur new expenditures after their POP has expired, but they may request payment after the POP has expired for expenses that were properly incurred while the POP was active. Recipients should make every effort to request payment during the 120 day closeout period. Those wishing to request payment after the 120 day period must first obtain written approval from their Cognizant Grant Officer or GO. Recipients must utilize the Department of Health and Human Services Payment Management System or PMS to request payment. In some cases, award recipients will draw down more funding than that is needed to complete their project. In these cases, any unspent funding must be returned to NASA once the recipient has liquidated their obligations. NASA's award recipients are not authorized to keep unspent federal funds or transfer those funds to another award. If an award recipient does not return unspent funds, it is possible that those funds may be considered a debt to the federal government, and agencies may take actions per 31 CFR Chapter 9 to reduce that debt. 
NASA may ask certain award recipients to dispose of award funded equipment. Per 2 CFR 1800 section 312, most of NASA's award recipients retain title to equipment purchased with awards funds without further obligations to NASA, including equipment reporting requirements. However, for-profit organizations and entities whose primary purpose is not research do not automatically maintain title to award funded equipment. These recipients must submit a final equipment inventory report to NASA and, and request disposition instructions from NASA if their awards terms and conditions require them to do so. NASA does not typically require award recipients to request disposition instructions. However, should an awards terms and conditions require disposition instructions, those instructions could allow the recipient to retain the equipment, require the re recipient to sell the equipment, require the recipient to transfer title of the equipment to the federal government or a third party, or require the recipient to dispose of the equipment. If disposition instructions are required, GOs should consult with the awards TOs to determine the appropriate instructions for that specific award. With NASA's prior written approval, award recipients may issue subawards. Recipients that issue subawards are referred to as pass-through recipients. If a subaward is issued, then the previously described closeout regulations and policies will flow down to the subaward recipient. This means that all subaward recipients must comply with the same closeout requirements with which pass-through recipients must comply, and pass-through recipients must monitor subaward recipients' compliance with these regulations and policies. Pass-through recipients must ensure that their subawards are closed out. Subaward recipients are required to submit all final reports to their pass-through recipient within 90 days of their POP expiration date. The 90-day report deadline affords pass-through recipients the time to review their subawards final reports and incorporate information from those reports into the final reports that the pass-through entity submits to NASA. A complete award file that is ready for closeout will contain required documents from the recipient, the NSSC, and the TOs. Closing awards in non-compliance. In this section, we will discuss actions that NASA may take to close out awards when the award recipient is non-compliant with closeout requirements. In this section, we want to discuss what efforts NASA will make to ensure that the closeout process proceeds as required in the event that a recipient is non-compliant with closeout requirements. As described earlier in the training, NASA will attempt to close out all awards once a complete award file has been compiled. However, sometimes it is necessary to close out awards with an incomplete file so that NASA may comply with 2 CFR 200's requirement to make every effort to complete closeout within one year of a POP's expiration. Prior to unilateral closeout, NASA will send a letter to the, to the recipient that states the following. The recipient is non-compliant with terms and conditions. NASA must unilaterally close out the award due to non-compliance and include the federal funding amount with which the award will be closed. NASA will make a number of attempts to contact the recipient prior to unilateral closeout and work with the recipient to resolve any instance of non-compliance before unilaterally closing an award. In addition to triggering the unilateral award closeout process, recipients non-compliance can also trigger an additional reporting requirement for NASA. Per CFR 200, section 344, if a recipient does not submit all reports to NASA within one year of the POP end date, the NASA must report the recipient's non-compliance with their awards terms and conditions in SAM.gov. Data reported to SAM.gov is made publicly available and agencies use this information to conduct their pre-award risk assessments. As a result, recipients' non-compliance with closeout requirements may end up affecting their ability to obtain awards in the future. Post-closeout activities. In this section, we will learn about activities that NASA and award recipients must complete after an award has been closed out. As I alluded to earlier, closeout does not mean the end of a recipient's responsibilities for the award. Per 2 CFR 200, section 345, closeout of an award does not affect any of the following. 
One, NASA's right to disallow costs and recover funds based on audits or other reviews. Two, requirements for the recipient to return funds as a result of later refunds, corrections, or other transactions. Three, NASA's ability to make financial adjustments, such as resolving indirect cost payments or making final payments. Four, audit requirements. Five, property management and disposition requirements. And six, record retention requirements. Award recipients must maintain records in accordance with 2 CFR 200 section 334, which stipulates that all award related records must be maintained for three years from the date of the submission of the final expenditure report. Your organization's record retention policy may require longer retention than three years, but must not be less. If your organization's policy requires a retention period of 10 years for federal programs, you must follow your organization's policies. Some recipients may be required to obtain an audit after their award has been closed out. Per 2 CFR 200 section 501, any recipient that expends $750,000 or more in federal funds during the recipient's fiscal year must obtain a single or program specific audit for that year. In early 2004, this threshold will be updated to 1 million for single audits once implemented. Single audit reports are made publicly available in the Federal Audit Clearinghouse and they are shared with cognizant federal agencies for review. If a single audit results in question costs and NASA determines that those costs will be disallowed, recipients will have to reimburse the agency for the disallowed costs even after their award has been closed. Although recipients who expend less than $750,000 in their fiscal year are not required to obtain a single audit, 2 CFR 200 section 337 states that awarding agencies, pass-through entities, and the GAO shall have the right of access to grant related documents in order to make audits, examinations, excerpts, and transcripts. This right of access is not limited to the three-year record retention period, but lasts as long as the records are retained. Note that many recipients' record retention policies go above and beyond the three-year record retention period. So it is possible that recipients may retain awards records long after the award has been closed. Let's do a brief recap of what was covered in this course. During this presentation, you've learned what award closeout is and why it is important. Final step in the grant's life cycle. You've also become familiar with how 2 CFR 200 and the GCAM provide the requirements that guide the closeout process. You've also become familiar with the award closeout process for NASA award recipients and actions recipients must complete before an award can be closed. Finally, we discussed how award management activities do not end with clo award closeout. There are several actions that must occur even after an award has been closed. And if you have any questions or comments about the course, please contact the Grants Policy and Compliance team in the NASA Office of Procurement at the address on the screen. Thank you.